Well, welcome to our closing keynote session at Aerospike Digital Summit 2021. It is my pleasure to introduce you to two database industry luminaries. In this session, you're going to hear from Srini Srinivasan, the founder and chief product officer at Aerospike, and along with Srini is Don Hatterley, often referred to as the godfather of DB2 and an IBM fellow and someone who has been around the block with all things data. The session you're about to hear from is gonna be kind of a fireside chat format where Srini and Don are, are gonna explore where is this all headed? Where is the future heading for real-time data and real-time data platforms? And so with that, it is my pleasure to turn the floor over to Srini Srinivasan and Don Hatterley. We are here with Don Hatterley, the father of IBM's DB2 database. Don has decades of experience in shipping products that are widely used in the industry in mission critical use cases, you know, in industries like financial services, telco, et cetera. I'd like to kick off today's um, keynote by asking Don, Don, why is it important for businesses to pay attention to real-time behavior. So I'm going to recall for you a midnight conversation we had in March. So in March, I had read two articles in the communications of the ACM. One was an interview with Ver Fogels, who is the lead on Amazon's S3, a highly performant data system, not database system, data system. The second was a follow-on article, which was the decline of computers for general purpose technology. And this was in the same review. And it spoke to the fact that specialization was driving the astronomical climb in performance in computing. And we see that with GPUs and FPUs. So these two articles sparked a little interest in me. The first one was because Werner, in building a highly performance system, said what he needed to do was stick the core to the principle of highly performant and not let creeping function creep in and destroy that performant target. Complexity destroys that. You can build a function outside, but you got to stay true in the core. This resonated with me. The second one was the article on the move to specialization, which we have seen in our industry, which is one size does not fit all. Specialization is driving the astronomical climate performance that we have out in the industry. And it offers a model in terms of how to do computing and you fit the algorithm to the model. You don't fit the model to the algorithm. So, this made me think back to when we were starting, when you were starting in 2009 and we connected. And you asked me, you had this highly performant database and you asked me whether there was a market for this. And my answer was definitely, there was a market for this. And what spurred that was this, is that it, it provided what I call extreme performance, which was an astronomical, increase in terms of throughput and response time. And if you hearken back to 2009, we were on the edge of ubiquitous computing. The internet was being deployed commercially, just starting, if you will. Mobile phones were being used for doing transactions, just starting. IoT, Internet of Things was just starting. We were going to see millions and millions and billions of devices online, and we were going to need an astronomical increase in terms of performance for throughput transactions, processing, and response time. The second thing that was going on in the, in the industry and had been for years was we call it real time, and I call it just in time. We keep on trying to move the time clock back, make things as quick as possible. 
I go and I buy things online now through Amazon or wherever, not because necessarily of the price, but because it's fast. It's now. It happens now. I order it, shows up on my doorstep this afternoon. I'm done. Could cost me a penny more, 10 cents. I don't care. Speed is everything. So if I go back to my old history in 1968, 1969, prior to your birth, what I was doing was building real-time operating systems, okay? And we were focused on microsecond response in order to manage coolant systems. Today, we have millisecond response to be able to handle ethane cracking plants for creating fuel. You have to carefully measure performance and pressure, et cetera, or it'll blow up. We have seconds that we, that we have to manage coolants in large factories, coolant systems in large factories. We have seconds that we have to manage traffic patterns in large cities, Mumbai, in order to be able to get traffic through. Okay, these are star milliseconds to seconds, but we also have the need for days move back to hours, move back to minutes. If you look at the processing of transactions for stock, settlement period. When we started this in 2009, it was three days, which was, whoa, that was a big improvement. Now three days is enough to kill you. I mean, look at what it did to Robin Hood. Three day settlement just about sank them. So they've moved back to two days, but they, it needs to move back to hours, to minutes, to seconds. The same thing for financial transactions in order to be able to transfer funds elsewhere. elsewhere. It takes me three days, three business days, ridiculous. That's also this move to cryptocurrency where I can make it now, happen now. Okay, so real time is just in time and every process keeps on moving back, faster, faster. Justin, I work with another vendor that, that is into the supply chain and just in time response to supply chain. If I can't retool the factory and deliver now, I'm gonna lose the business. Okay, so time keeps getting compressed. And what we have to do is respond to that compress with a highly performant database that scales over time. And, and responds to this asthma. So I said these two articles sparked this little memory in me of our early conversation. And we had the, the response, which was, yes, there's a, a vital market to this. And there were databases that were in that market, but they were on old hardware fabric, old fabric. And I didn't see them moving forward. I, I just did not see them moving forward. And I didn't see other players in this market and it was going to balloon. So the question I asked you on, which I'm sending these, these little midnight missives to you was, we had agreed that there was a market for this, which was very extreme performance, high, super high availability, no downtime, never lose data and continued astronomical improvements in terms of performance, because that's what was going to happen. And the question that I asked you on that midnight was, are we still on target for this? So you've got enough deployments in the marketplace with people in production. Have you veered off path or not? Because if you go back to Werner's statement, which I believe in, you've got to stay true to the core for high performance. You can't let other opportunities distract you and it becomes complex and you're no longer deliver on that particular principle. And your response to me was, yes. Yeah, let, let Go me- Go into your next response, but my question then was, then tell me what we're gonna do over the foreseeable future to give me this astronomical improvement as we move forward. Yeah, th thank you, Don. Let me, let me uh, elaborate on that a little bit. So over the years, um, for those of you who have um, been to prior Aerospike summits, um, you would realize that we've added a lot of features to the product. For example, our hybrid memory architecture, which leverages DRAM and flash was extended to persistent memory, as well as all flash um, deployments. Um, and I think what 
that kind of architecture allowed us to do was to um, support uh, companies like the Trade Desk to do real-time bidding, you know, uh, or PayPal to do um, fraud score assignment uh, during the real-time transactions. Adding strong consistency helped customers like Banca d'Italia um, achieve one of the things that you mentioned, Don, which is um, the ability to uh, do interbank money transfers within seconds instead of days. And that is uh, strong consistency was really important because the way Aerospike uh, provided that was also cost effective. So the cost per transaction was kept really low. So you could do billions of these transactions for a fraction of a euro cent. And that you know, was really important for them. Over the years, we also added a rich set of data structures to Aerospike to make sure that while we maintain the focus on the core performance at scale, as well as strong consistency, we are able to expand the ability of the database to handle certain kinds of applications to make it more useful for a variety of businesses. Now, today, or, or in this summit, um, we stay true to that um, goal by, by offering uh, better uh, query efficiency, including expressions, uh, which can be pushed down into the database so that you can push down operations on expressions. So the processing is closer to the data, as well as set indexes, which make it um, faster to access uh, table you know, level queries when there are a lot of sets within a really large namespace and you can isolate the, the access to a single set. Uh, what these um, kinds of query efficiencies give you is further uh, reduction in uh, server footprint for accessing large amounts of data, petabyte scale, for example. Uh, we're also expanding multi-tenancy capabilities. Again, this is still focused on the core where a lot of workloads uh, can use the same database and we can isolate uh, each of them away from each other. Now, this is a very, very important um, use case for large customers uh, who run data services, like the transactional data services, um, Don, that you talked about, where you're storing um, all of the transactions that ever happened in the history of this company uh, within this database and allowing that to be accessed um, in somewhat real time. Some of these uh, requests don't require the sub millisecond response times, but they do require that all of these um, uh, data is available uh, at their fingertips when something like an SEC request comes in uh, to audit a particular transaction, which happened maybe a few months ago and correlated with other things that happened at the same time. So we're expanding it uh, with integrations with analytic systems like Spark and Presto. Uh, for example, you know, this was also announced um, in, in this summit, but the important thing to remember is we are still staying close to the core. We are trying not to invent um, duplicate technologies um, like uh, complex um, uh, aggregations in the Aerospike database. Uh, we would rather uh, integrate with systems like Spark um, to which, which do a really good job of parallel processing on large amounts of data. And we are able to work with that. You know, going forward, we are uh, enhancing uh, secondary indexes uh, in order to provide efficient access to uh, our data. Uh, by also supporting secondary indexes um, on all of the storage um, that is already supported for primary indexes like DRAM, flash, PMEM, et cetera, uh, as well as uh, enhancing data models, uh, which, are, which fit more with the core database, like uh, graph databases, for example, fit very well with our core platform, as well as certain kinds of time series accesses. So we are focusing on extending our um, uh, ability to handle workloads while still staying true to the core. You know, all of this continues to help um, Aerospike reduce our server footprint for petabyte scale databases. Um, you know, one example which was presented in this summit was uh, a joint session uh, on uh, from Intel and Amazon Web Services and Aerospike showing a 20 uh, node Amazon EC2 cluster uh, running a petabyte size database with a trillion objects, uh, which was able to deliver millions of reads and writes per second. Um, so, you know, that's kind of um, how we are staying true to our core while expanding the reach of applications uh, that can use Aerospike. Now, Don, um, what do you think, um, how do you think real-time businesses will evolve in the future 
And what do you think will be more important as um, to Aerospike as these uh, as as the area matures? So, so real time, just in time, time improvement of every process that I know of is happening out there in the industry, from financial to insurance to retail to uh, point of sale monitoring, and if you look at automotive. Uh, real-time response in terms of detection, forward detection of, of information that's out there and reaction to it. So I see this drive uh, exacerbating. I mean, I see it in going in spades where time is shrinking in spades. And I see the number of devices, as I said, or the number of, of data collection points increasing dramatically. The little the paper that uh, you and I authored with Teresa uh, Melvin, where she shows the information coming off of satellites that need to be analyzed in real time. And those volumes of petabytes of data that need to be analyzed in real time to understand what was going on down at earth uh, is, is the tip of the iceberg. It's absolutely the tip of the iceberg. So, so I see this continuing, the large quantities of data and this drive towards time. As much as we move time forward, there's this need to reach back in time. We have these settlement processes where they determined that 10, five years ago that the interest rate that they provided on our account was incorrect. And they have to go back and replay time to recalculate what our value of our asset is based on that error. And so this is a, a huge replay of history that's going on. So I see it continuing. The second in our little midnight response that I had, which excited me to death, was your response said, yes, we were on track for this extreme performance uh, market that we were after. That, that by golly, we had validated that it was there and we had we responded to it. The second part of your response, and so it's like, fine. I mean, we make the guess. And then if, if, if you go in a different direction, I'd like to know because you're the guy on the street. I'm the guy that's sitting back here uh, going hiking and playing golf and having a good time. So it's nice to know that that was validated. The second response that you gave me, which was really excited me as well. And I, because I said, well, then what's tops on the customer list? What is, what's the most demanded thing? I mean, they request lots of things. And you said the secondary indexes, and you, have, you will have already spoken to that in this conference. And the second really got me excited. And that was SLA, service level agreements. You said that was tops on the list. This excited me because in development of databases, what customers usually do is they take the database, they try out something which is essential, but not too essential, or not bet your business. And then if that works out, then they move it into something which is essential. Eventually they get to a point where they bet their business on you. I mean, you are now in mission critical, business critical applications. If something happens to you, their business is at risk. At this point, the most important requirement to them is SLA. How do I manage for predictable throughput and performance? I've seen this half a dozen times as I've produced database products. So you, meet, you, you met a major milestone in my, my world, which is you're in critical performance areas, mission critical in the enterprises. And SLA speaks to the fact that we have mixed workloads running on the Plex, whatever it is, and we have to manage to the throughput, response time, cost requirements for the various elements of the workload in order to meet the business needs. And I ask you, which I'm going to ask you now, what are we doing to respond to that? Because I know we have elements that are in there, but you said there's more coming and I'm excited to hear about this. Um, that's a really good point, Don. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, one of the most important things that Aerospike um, uh, focuses on over the years 
is the resilience of our database when it's running as a service. This is something we have worked on over the years, uh, ever since we started the company. Uh, initially, our systems ran on bare metal and they had certain kinds of characteristics. What has happened over the last few years, especially, is that the most mission critical systems are being run on the cloud uh, as much as they are run on bare metal uh, data centers. Uh, what this brings to, um, to our attention, definitely, is that the infrastructure on the cloud behaves uh, quite a bit differently than infrastructure does uh, when it's running on a bare metal data center. And these are typically um, um, both operational as well as um, certain uh, aspects of virtualization. But for example, I'll give you an example. So it is very common on a cloud system for an instance to be live migrated as some of the cloud, cloud vendors call it. Call it. They, they acquire the system, uh, the instance, and then they will simply migrate it across to some other location. Now, something like a database, which actually has a lot of data, um, means that when you acquire an Aerospike node, uh, there's a lot of data in it. And this data has to move somewhere else. Uh, and the fact that it is quiesced and um, restarted uh, creates certain challenges. Now, normally an Aerospike cluster uh, automatically kind of deals with failures of nodes. Uh, without any issues, uh, but some of the cloud uh, behavior uh, needs to be handled properly. Now, that's just one aspect of things, and many of these things we already do well, but we continue to focus on working on situations where uh, certain kinds of failures, which are not really clean failures, if you will, uh, they need to be handled on the cloud better uh, because things can be flaky um, due to various situations on the network and so on. In these situations, our work as we go forward is to ensure that our system um, will degrade uh, at the level of the failure. That is, if one or two nodes of a 10 node cluster go away, the amount of data which may not be available should be proportional. The impact should be proportional to the uh, amount of resources that are no longer in the cluster. Now, you might think that this is an easy problem to solve, but it's not so easy in the context of a distributed system because uh, data is replicated and uh, strong consistency transactions have to coordinate things across nodes. So this is something which we have definitely done a decent job of, but we continue to invest in. Uh, additionally, um, there is visibility inside the cluster. And one of the things that we have implemented or we have um, announced in this conference is the multi-tenancy support with uh, rate limits for transactions. Now, this is going to help a lot in maintaining the resiliency of deployments by, by operators who have to manage um, and uh, juggle uh, various application teams which are using the shared da data service. So this will give them some tools uh, to help um, manage such situations in the case of one uh, particular application, um, you know, becoming a rogue application and trying to use a lot more resources, uh, we now have tools to be able to uh, prioritize these applications so that you can have uh, certain long running tasks, uh, which could potentially take over the system to be throttled automatically. So you can have a hierarchy of these priorities and that this prioritization will ensure that a minimum level of service, which can be guaranteed by the business uh, can be enforced uh, throughout. And there are many more such things we are working on, but, but the key point um, for uh, key takeaway for, the, for those listening to, the, to this um, uh, presentation or this uh, keynote is that Aerospike is engaged in making sure that our SLAs um, are met. And our goal is to guarantee our customers' businesses as they manage, um, you know, as they reimagine uh, the real-time applications uh, in the way they need to, you know, um, need to for their own success. So our goal is to guarantee that these real-time SLAs are met uh, for these applications. So do we have any uh, KPIs in terms of forward forecasting, need for additional storage, additional memory, additional uh, compute power uh, based on how the workload is going? Do we have any forward forecast going on? Um, we actually um, can project based on the evolution or the growth in terms of um, 
the various resources. You know, that's kind of one of the things which is as part of the Aerospike database 5.6 release is the ability to uh, chart these uh, usages over time. And we can use that to predict uh, where the system is headed. You know, um, clearly one could have a spike which is unrelated to what happened in the future, in, in the past, but it's really not likely in an, in an environment which is fairly stable for a few months in terms of workloads. Uh, the increases that we are seeing over that time are most likely to, you know, going to continue going forward. So we already, even before 5.6, we had a lot of um, um, statistics which, which could allow us to chart that, but we're just getting better and better in terms of transactional management um, over time. And this should help us uh, as we go forward uh, with even more uh, SLA re you know, requirements in the future. So is, is the detection of a slowing down process, is that with inside the database or is it cast outside the database? In other words, we provide lots of statistics to some management tools. But do we have any of this embedded inside the database that we know that, by golly, we're not meeting our initiative and that we need to do take an action? This is something which is work in progress, I would say. There are some things we can detect inside the database, but there are a number of things we will not be able to because it's a distributed system. So, you know, a simple example is the strong consistency algorithm of Aerospike relies on what's called a roster. The roster is something that is set in the database. It is not something that can be changed within the database. However, within that limit, we are able to figure out if nodes are coming in or out. And we have settings, for example, to drop replica levels if the cluster becomes too small. So we don't have enough space for it. So there are things which can be uh, detected within the database and we will, you know, but, but we're also building a, a number of tools to observe from outside. So we can have a, a combination, you know, between the, both of them together, we will have complete information. Uh, to enable our operators and um, customers to maintain their SLAs. Yeah, because there's only so much that you can do within a little self-contained database. You have to know what's going on in the entire environment. So we have to interact with right. a global management tool that sees wider perspective of what's going on. We don't really know what's going on with the network. We don't really know what's going on with other parts. And we're just a right. player inside that. So, that is right, but, but we are taking ownership, so to speak, from an Aerospike point of view, that we will observe the entire system and provide help to our customers to run a service, whatever the infrastructure is, be it cloud, be it bare metal. So we are actually uh, getting that kind of expertise, um, both in our teams, uh, in our processes, as well as in the products themselves. So that's what I wanted to hear, because on the SLA is the database turns out to be the heart, a, a core vital organ inside, and it has to report when things are going wrong and it tries to overcome as much as possible, but it has to alert that there's something bad going on out there and somebody, a wider perspective needs to be taken. And we can try as much corrective action as possible. We talked of the one, which is that by golly, if there's a slow up and there's a large queue that's built up, we often just throw the queue away and make the people re-enter. Why? Because we don't want everybody in line to suffer the same problem of a slowdown, right? So there's techniques that we can handle ourselves, but we have to interface with a wider perspective tool that's out there and, and alert the customer that we're not feeling very well. Things are not feeling well. So this excited me. It, it honestly did excite me. I know it. things excite different people for different reasons. This excited me because this is a major milestone in terms of Aerospike viability in the marketplace was that this became one of the key requirements in there, which was more, more, more service level agreement management capability. So I'm glad to see that. Thank you, Don. I think I think I really appreciate that insight because, um, you know, I, I think you, you definitely have a lot of experience in seeing these transitions. And I'm really um, delighted to see that Aerospike has made uh, a significant, um, you know, uh, has made significant progress. Uh, in, in towards getting to our goals. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, um, for, for those of you who are listening to this um, keynote, uh, that you can look forward to Aerospike continuing on this path of both staying true to our core in terms of making sure that our system continues to perform at scale with low server footprint to help your real-time businesses. But we will also continue and expand our abilities to um, maintain 
and improve these real-time SLAs that are required to guarantee your business. Uh, thank you, Don, for your time today. I really enjoyed uh, your insights. Um, and I guess we will see everyone again next year at the next Aerospike Summit. I look forward to the next 12 years. Hopefully I'm still here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as we wind down the last three days here at Aerospike Digital Summit 2021, I wanna stop for a moment and say thank you, but also to invite you to give us your feedback. It is extremely valuable for us to hear from you, whether you have positive comments or areas for improvement, we would like to hear it all. In the next day or so, you will receive an email from us with a very short survey, and I would very much appreciate it if you would complete it and get it back to us. It will help us to make next year's event even better than this year's has been. So thank you for taking the time to give us some feedback when you get the email from us. And finally, I wanna say thank you from wherever you are in the world. We've tried to capture most of the languages here, but we cannot, again, thank you enough for spending time with us. And with that, I'd like to wrap it up with say, we look forward to seeing you again at Aerospike Summit 2022 next year. Thank you. <laughs>